to talk about the Brazilian <coughs> experience in cooperation, but first I'll just talk a little about, bit about our cartel program, anti-cartel program. And it's much of what Mark has said. Uh, global economy makes us all globally aware of what others are doing. And we all, always like to quote the Beatles in that. Uh, it's just, uh, I get by with a little help of my friends. That's pretty much what we do. So we always try to see what's do going on in the rest of the world. And we give it a Brazilian sauce and to that, that <clears throat> what's going on to develop our own practices, and especially in uh, anti cartel, um, pro in our anti cartel program, this has been very successful. So I'll just. Well, in Brazil, the antitrust law dates from the first antitrust law dates from 1962, but we didn't have an open economy, so there was not much point in competition uh, at that time. So we had another antitrust law in 1994, and but it didn't give us initially the power to uh, investigate with down rates and other uh, instruments, and we didn't have the leniency program. This was only uh, an amendment in the law in the year 2000 that brought these this powers to the agency. And um, this was actually a first time when we had some cooperation because we did that uh, based on the OECD's uh, best practices and recommendations. Uh, and we had that since 2000, but until 2003, we had not had uh, many experiences uh, with fighting cartel and with leniency and with down rates and with that sort of investigation. So uh, we had the law, but we had to get things done. And we used a traditional recipe, uh, fear of detection, threat of severe sanctions, and transparency. And that was how we did it. First of all, we developed a, a need to for getting tips from society and from other members. It could be done anonymously. And then we launched a series of brochures explaining uh, to undertakings, but also to society, what, was, what, what cartel is, what is the harm that they do to economy and to consumers. And this is a new culture in Brazil, so we spend a lot of time teaching at the companies, but especially the society, what are the benefits of competition. So this is a very, a very productive way of teaching them how to investigate and what's the harm and how do you get hints if there is a cartel going on. And then in 2008, we had the first anti-cartel, uh, national anti-cartel day created by President Lula. And we had a major event in, in the Ministry of Justice. Uh, President Lula was there himself. Nelly Cruz, who at the time was the, the head of the commission, the European Commission, and Scott Heyman, uh, the, the assistant, the deputy assistant in DOJ was there as well. So we had a huge event, and that was a part of our campaign to raise awareness of competition uh, benefits and of uh, cartel harms. So, and along with the with the anti-cartel national day, we did these campaigns in airports, uh, and we distribute uh, 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 approximately a million brochures, and we target 1.5 million people, and in we were distributed in all regions of Brazil. So we had massive media, media coverage and. We distributed because it the anti cartel day is at October eighth and the children's day is October twelfth. So we merged these two dates and we did something targeted to the children, uh, which I'm going to go then I come back. It is, this is the comic book. These are very famous characters in Brazil. So we <coughs> just try to mix everything up and this is something that we are trying to invest in competition culture from the beginning. Something like children do with the environment. They just teach their parents. So that's what we are trying to do with competition. And that's an example that this might work. <laughs> and this is a photo of our campaigns in the airports. This is a very traditional region in Brazil, which is Bahia. And 
these were um, major campaigns in the in the weekly magazines and especially the biggest magazines and the, the business magazines we had this this advertisement that says companies that participate in cartel get dirty. This is trying to reach as much as attention as we can to say that cartels are bad. And then we had this this strategy to uh, targeting the, the 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 threat of severe sanctions. And in Brazil, since 1901 and 1991. Uh, cartel is a crime uh, according to the law. So we have administrative investigations and we have criminal investigations. They are separate, but our struggle is to make this go on simultaneously. And in the administrative uh, sphere, the companies may get fines from one up to 30% of their turnover in the year before the beginning of the investigation. And individuals can be uh, sanctioned with fines as well. And in the criminal arena, uh, companies, individuals only, may get up to five years of jail time or fines. And so far, we haven't had so much experience with individuals going to jail after a, a final sentencing. They just spend there in the beginning of the investigation a depending on the evidence that the police and the prosecutors has, have against them. They can spend some days in the, in, the, in the prison, but it's only temporary. And in most cases, the prosecutors who do also impose fines in the criminal arena. And the criminal investigation, it's done by prosecutors. So we had this huge uh, initiative to uh, approach the public prosecutor's office and make them aware of competition as well. Uh, they deal with all kinds of cases, so we had to bring the, the traditional competition speech, uh, like a prayer, and we carry the, the competition words to spread around the world, so we did that with the, the prosecutors. And um, this was a nice initiative. We have had many results, I'll just show you next, but we developed this national anti-cartel strategy, it, which is a network, a domestic network, where we link all the prosecutors and the police, because in Brazil, the police starts the investigation and the prosecutor bring the charges. Uh, and we are also trying to get judges and everybody that is involved in the process in, in, at any time, bring to this network so that we can just tell what competition is about, how do you, do, you, do you find a cartel, how do you investigate a cartel, which are the, the common signs that there, are, there is a cartel going on, and this is a major uh, initiative for us, and it has been so, so, so successful. These are the numbers of this, and the results of the, our initiative. Um, we have done, from 2003 to 2006, uh, 30 down rates, and now we have done 200, in, from 2007 to 2012, we did 267. The initial agreements we had seven until 2006, and now we have 11 from 2007 to 2010. And as executives facing criminal charges, we had 13, and now we have 237. So this is a huge, um, a result, and this shows very clearly how we have been su successful in our initiatives to, um, to, to tell prosecutors, to tell society what's competition about, what's cartel all about, and to bring them along with us in this journey of fighting anti-competitive conflicts. Um, the step three from the world known recipe uh, of threat of severe sanctions and uh, fear of detection is transparency. We knew that we were not going to be able to develop an efficient uh, leniency program if we did not invest uh, our efforts in transparency. So that's what we did. We sent letters along with this same brochure that you just have, this yellow one, uh, in Portuguese, obviously. 
and we just send them to the biggest, the 1,000 biggest company, largest companies in Brazil, and we explain all about how the leniency program would work. This letter was signed by, by the head of our agency and the head of the competition division, so it would explain clearly how the leniency program work, uh, who they have to contact to, and which were the terms, what was expected for, from them in terms of cooperation, uh, what would they get in the end, if it was immunity, if it was a discount and the fine, because if you do the leniency before we have any investigation, uh, you will get full, full immun immunity, and if we have already an investigation going on, you can come to the leniency program, but then you have a discount, you, don't, you will not have full immunity. And oh, this is Haskett, but we did a roadshow in Brussels and in Washington <coughs> uh, in the major law firms so that we could talk a little bit about how the program works. So that was a very nice initiative. Also, we have had many companies coming uh, before the agency to apply for the leniency program as a result of this initiative. Some of them were not very this happy with the letters. They would just send us back and say, what are you doing? I don't need this letter. What are you implying by that? But uh, in most of the cases, it, it was a successful initiative. And about our experience in cooperation. Well, as Marcus uh, stressed in his presentation, uh, for us, informal cooperation is, has always uh, proved to be the one giving us the best results. Um, we have had some cooperation with the U.S., and I think that the most important of this cooperation is their help to build our anti-cartel program. They have given us all the necessary inputs to improve our, our leniency program, and we have now, uh, as it was mentioned before, we have three agencies, but we are now in the process of merging into one. And for this bill uh, that will change the, the institutional fr framework of the Brazilian agency, uh, we also had a very nice input from the US. Um, and the EU and Australia, we have had some informal cooperation um, about some cases that were going on. Um, sometimes we didn't have the results that we wanted to because of legal, legal constraints that could, they, they could not give us some of the information that we needed. But um, the good thing is that they tried very hard. And that's one, that's one thing that I, I, I feel that is always there. Everybody is doing their, their best effort to cooperate. Sometimes they can do it for legal reasons, but they are trying their best. And if they can, they will just make a way uh, to give you the most that they can without infringement of their uh, own laws. And in some cases, we have had the opportunity to exchange uh, non-confidential information. That happens a lot uh, by email, by phone, and it's, it's very interesting because we can clarify some issues. Sometimes uh, the defendants, they are not very, very, um, how do I put this? <laughs> they, they, they try to, to make things don't look like exactly as they are. So they are saying that, ah, oh, in Brazil, they do like this and this and that. And we say, no, that's not how things happen here. So sometimes other jurisdictions, they tend to believe that we do things different that we uh, actually do. And that's uh, a mislead that we always try to, to undo by talking directly to the other jurisdictions. And this has been proved to be very Nice as well. And we have cooperation agreements uh, with other uh, agencies. And some of them we have already used, some of them we haven't. US and Chile we have used already. I don't think we have already an experience with Russia, but 
I can come back to Dublin to tell you a bit about that. Um, and now uh, we have cooperated in, in a, a very, in a formal and direct and very um, efficient way in the compressor's case. That was the first Brazilian experience with simultaneous da down rates uh, with the, e e the, the commission. And why is that case so symbolic? And why cooperation happened here in a way that it didn't have before? Because the evidence was in Brazil, the best evidence of the cartel was in Brazil. Uh, one of the individuals that were organizing this cartel scheme, he was in Brazil. And that's really one point of when are you going to cooperate and when are other, other agencies going to ask for your cooperation? When you have the easier access to the evidence. We are not going to cooperate if you can't uh, give any, any help to the investigation. So previous, uh, we had uh, an ICN roundtable in Washington in late March and we discussed exactly cooperation. And this was a thing that was very highlighted. Uh, we, agencies that cooperate are the ones that are in the best position to carry on the investigation. And in the compressor's case, that, that was our position. The evidence was there, and then we had the simultaneous down rates. And before the down rates, we had a lot of uh, a period of informal, uh, exchange of information, uh, both with the DOJ and with the EU. We were uh, talking about who were the targets, which were the individuals that we have to, to investigate, uh, what was their role in the cartel. So we exchanged all kinds of information and then we did the down rates uh, in an appropriate Brazilian time. Uh, sometimes we don't cooperate for the, um, the oddest reasons, but I think that one of the reasons that it would be very difficult to do a simultaneous down rate in Australia is because if we go in an Australian time, the companies are going to be closed in Brazil and the same will go and vice versa. So this is something that um, is difficult to cooperate also because uh, sometimes we just have these time constraints or technology constraints. It's not uh, in any agency disposal to just uh, join a teleconference or a web <coughs> webinar or something like that. So technology time, they're all uh, challenges for cooperation too. And also in the compressor's case, we had the experience after, after uh, beginning the investigation, having the down rates. This was a case that was also investigated in Chile, which is our closest neighbor. And they just have, uh, they had a hard time to serving the, the, the companies and some individuals because they didn't have a residence or they weren't based in Chile, but they were in Brazil. So this was the first time that we received uh, a demand to serve individuals that were in Brazil but not in other jurisdictions. We did that and it was very su successful. Chile had a time constraint that he had to do, he can only investigate up to two years after the, the facts and their deadline was in early January and we got their message, we need to serve these people, I believe in November. And we were able to speed things up for them and to have the, the individuals served from November to uh, January. And this was something huge because sometimes you can serve individuals in Brazil. We are in Brazil in this uh, same time. So this was something that we are very proud of, that we could actually uh, help another jurisdictions to uh, make up their case. Uh, in this ICN roundtable, it was mentioned a lot that we have to get pick up the phone uh, cooperation, have to have pick up the phone information. It has to be something easy uh, so that every jurisdiction can do this kind of cooperation. But then you have another problem, which is 
trust and confidence. And uh, those are the major uh, challenges, I think, for cooperation. You have to trust the other agency. You have to trust their per personnel. For us in Brazil, this is even harder because we experience a lot of personnel rotation. Someone is in charge, and the next day they are not there. So you have always to present yourself to the other agencies as someone trustful. And this is, uh, this is not something automatic. So trust and confidence is something that you have to spend a lot of time to build, and it can be destroyed with, uh, um, in any minute. So you have to invest a lot of efforts to build this confidence and trust. And this is something that we invest also to get uh, appropriate cooperation. So and now just to end it, uh, we have we were first recipients the recip recipients of uh, cooperation, and now we are becoming donors. Uh, we have had some of our staff in São Salvador, um, mostly to um, teach how to gather uh, digital <coughs> evidence. We have also been in Chile. We were with them. They were having these efforts to um, have. To, uh, uh, to, to approve uh, in the Congress a leniency program, and we were there to help them. And in Argentina, we are also there giving consultation about how to implement a leniency program. So I think that we have done as much as we could in, this, in our capacity and to cooperate with our um, close neighbors. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much.